learning objectives. In this chapter, the user would learn the following in detail. Basics of Object-Oriented Database Management Systems Terminology Understanding of Types Inheritance Representing Logical Relationships Basic Interface and Class Structure Declaring Attributes Specifying Relationships Adding Operator Signatures and the Complete Schema Basic Interface and Class Structure the ODL syntax for declaring interfaces and classes is similar to the C++ and Java syntax but not quite identical. The boundaries of a class or interface declaration however are taken directly from C++. We can see the program. Each declaration begins with either the keyword class or interface to identify which element is being declared. The keyword is followed by the name of the interface or class. By convention, class and interface names begin with uppercase letters. If a class implements one or more interfaces, those interfaces are separated from the class by a colon. We can see the program. When a class inherits from another class, it extends the class, it shows the program. If a class has an extent, it will specify the name of the extent in parenthesis. Following the class name, it shows the program. Combining all of the syntax, the interfaces and the classes in the school database have the basic structure. There are three major new classes in this version of the database. The grade received class is a composite entity between a student and a teacher. For elementary school students, the relationship represents just a student's transcript. However, for middle school student, there is a second relationship that indicates current class enrollments. There are also two types of teachers, elementary and middle school, making it easier to assign elementary students to a single and a middle school students to different teachers for a different subject. Basics of Object-Oriented Database Management Systems Terminology The terminology of the object-oriented paradigm varies a great deal depending on the specific environment with which you are working. Therefore, the best way to start examining the proposed standard for object-oriented databases is to understand the precise terminology used in the standards documentation. The basic components of an object-oriented database are the object and the literal. An object is the shelf-contained instance of an entity about which you have been reading. It has some type of unique object identifier and literal is a specified value such as female or 31. A literal has no identifier. A literal is not necessarily a single value. It may be a structure, a collection of related values stored under a single name. Objects have properties which include both their attributes and the relationships they have with their objects. The current values for an object's properties make up the object's current state. All objects and literals have types. Each type has a specific domain shared by all objects and the literals of the type. Types can also have behaviors. For a type that has behaviors, all objects of the type share the same behaviors. In a practical sense, a type can be a class from which an object is created, an interface or a data type. For a literal, an object can be thought of as an instance of a type. The things that an object knows how to do or its operations, each operation can require data as input and may return 
some value with the known type. A database is a collection of objects that are managed so that they can be accessed by multiple users. The definition of a database is contained in a schema that has been created with object definition language, ODL, or the data manipulation language that is defined as a part of the proposed object oriented database standard. Inheritance Inheritance is the process by which objects of one class acquired the properties of objects of another classes. It supports the concept of hierarchical classification. For example, the bird Robin is a part of class Flying Bird, which is again a part of the class Bird. The principle behind this short of division is that each derived class shares common characteristics with the class from which it is derived. In object-oriented programming, the concept of inheritance provides the idea of reusability. This means that we can add additional features to an existing class without modifying it. This is possible by deriving a new class from the existing one. The new class will have the combined feature of both the classes. The real appeal and the power of the inheritance mechanism is that it allows the programmer to reuse a class that is almost but not exactly what we want and to tailor the class in such a way that it does not introduce any undesirable side effects into the rest of classes. Forms of inheritance Single inheritance It is the inheritance hierarchy wherein one derived class inherits from one base class. Multiple inheritance It is the inheritance hierarchy where in one derived class inherits from multiple base classes. Hierarchical inheritance. It is the inheritance hierarchy where in multiple subclasses inherit from one base class. Multi level inheritance. It is the inheritance hierarchy where in subclass acts as a base class for other classes. Hybrid inheritance. The inheritance hierarchy that reflects any legal combination of another four types of inheritance. Specifying relationships Relationships are different attributes in that they store object identifiers rather than data. A relationship declaration must also include a specification of, of the other end of the relationship. The general syntax for the one end of a relationship is as follows. For example, because an elementary school student has only one teacher, the relationship would be relationships on the many end use a slightly different syntax. Because an elementary school teacher has multiple students in his or her class, the inverse side of the student to teacher relationship would be as with attributes, relationships have been declared at the highest level possible in the inheritance hierarchy. For example, the relationship between a student and grades received can be declared between the student class and the grade received class. Because the relationship is the same for both elementary and middle school students. However, the relationship involving Current class enrollments is different for middle school and elementary school. Therefore, those relationships are declared at the lowest level in the hierarchy. Understanding of Types One of the major characteristics of the object-oriented paradigm is the distinction between a class's public interface and its private elements encapsulation. The proposed standard for object-oriented databases makes this distinction by talking about a type's external specification and its implementations. External specifications A type's external specification includes the following. The operations that can be performed on an instance of the type. The properties of the type 
those that are accessible through some mechanism. Exceptions that can be raised by the types of operations. In programming terms, an exemption is a predictable error. For example, when a program is trying to open a file to read its contents, an exception will occur. The exception would be raised. If the file cannot be found, the program tries to perform the file open operation. If the exception is raised, the program can then catch the exception and take appropriate action. In this example, appropriate action might be displaying an alert notifying the user that the file cannot be found. By including exception handling in their operations, types can simplify the job of the application programmer and provide tighter control over data integrity. The external specification of a type should be implementation independent. It contains only the information necessary to invoke an operation or an instance of the type to retrieve the value of a property and to identify exceptions. The writers of the proposed object database stand to refer to this as an abstract description, something that has no implementation details. An interface contains only abstract operations. A class contains both abstract operations and the abstract state of a type. A literal contains only an abstract state. Implementations An implementation of a type consists of two parts. The representation is a programming language, dependent data structure containing the type's properties. The specifics of the implementation come from a language binding. This means that the internal representation of a type will be different depending on the programming language being used and that a given type therefore may have more than one representation. The details of a type's operations are specified by a set of methods. There must be at least one method for each operation in the external specification. However, a type may include methods that are never seen outside the type itself. Such methods usually perform utility functions or other methods of the type. Methods will be written in the same programming language used to express a type's representation. If a database will support application programming in C++, Java and Smalltalk, for example, then there will need to be the implementations of each type. One for each language, however, typically only one implementation is used in any given application program. Primitive Types Every element in an object-oriented database is built from a small group of primitive types. Boolean A value of either true or false. Character A single ASCII or Unicode character. Short, a signed integer, usually 8 or 16 bits long. Long, a signed integer, usually 32 or 64 bits long. Float, a single precision floating point value. Double, a double precision floating point value. Note, integer sizes and floating point ranges are implementation and machine dependent. Oct. 8-bit storage, string, a string of characters, enum, an enumerated type where the values are specified explicitly when the type is declared, any, any data type, the any type is analogous to using a void parameter in C++ and using the object class as a parameter in Java. From these data types, we can build larger types, both literals and classes, that can be used to build even larger types. Conclusion In this chapter, we have covered the following in detail. Basics of Object-Oriented Database Management Systems Terminology Understanding of Types Inheritance Representing Logical Relationships 
basic interface and class structure, declaring attributes, specifying relationships, adding operator, signatures and the complete schema.